I just say thank you to whoever at Chrysler came up with putting that wire in the wiring harness so that somebody with a shell can wire that up easily. Thank you, thank you. Bro hug. You're the best. Brian's Mobile One. Hi, my name is Brian and I just did the wiring for my truck's harness and frame up to a two-wire connector on my shelf so that I can take my shell on and off and just unplug it. The wiring is for the third brake light or high mount brake light, depending on how you want to call it. And the factory wiring harness actually has a little wire looped up and conveniently located on the back of the truck so that you can just run a little wire up to where your plug is and then you can tap into the frame so that you can be able to take the truck bed off if you need to for whatever reason. So I'm going to show you how I did mine and uh, the cool thing about all this is that it's fuse protected on the truck so you don't have to worry about creating a whole new circuit and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. They've already taken care of it for you. Let me show you how to take advantage of that. This particular Ram 2500 was produced on Pi 314 and I'm going to show you where the third brake light wire is. I've got an ARE shell. I've got a new brake light for 25 bucks on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. Let's show you how to wire this thing. To make this light light up, you've got two wires. And polarity is specific on this. It's not like the incandescent bulbs of old. Black wire has to go to black and red to red. So to wire this up, it's really simple. You need a ground and you need a power wire. If you want to use a big battery like this, what I do is I scratch it first with alligator clamps. You can take a file, clamp it on and that way it doesn't slip off, it holds nice and tight. You can use a big full-size battery that doesn't have enough amps to start a car, but still good enough for testing. Get all the life you can out of your old battery, then turn it in for the deposit. Got some speaker wire, alligator clips. This is the wiring for the shell. And when you look at the brake light up there, you can see how that comes on when I hit it. The ground wire, you can ground that to anything on the vehicle, uh, but the power wire is located underneath the truck. So you've got your bumper here, so follow the bumper back. Here's your trailer hitch, goes to the frame, and then there's this bar here. And you don't have to cut or get into anything really. It's just taped up on top here. You can see the wire is right there. And it's white and purple. This one's all taped up. I wanted to show this. I'd seen some other videos where they show it where it's already untaped, but it's actually outside the loom. And it's just taped over the top. So you don't see it unless you're looking for it. Come up over the top and you see it's white with a purple wire. I know this is the same for 2013. Um, 2016, another guy had a video and he was pulling the wire out clear up here. Um, so that's a possibility. But most all of them, it's going to be just up here close. But you just run it up through the taillights. Uh, when you pull the driver's side or left hand side as you're sitting in a taillight, you can actually go up into that tube. There's actually an opening right here and you can fish it up there and just have it dangle or you can have it stick up here, use a piece of Velcro and then have a plug so you can detach it. I had to pull this out, I'm going to back up for just a second. You got two screws, one here and here. They are a T25, uh, T meaning Torx, looks something like this. Like Once your two screws are out, you can just pull back on this. If you pinch it this way and just roll back, that'll pull it. And by roll back, I'm just kind of flexing my hand. The interface, it just kind of goes over a couple of lobster claws on these little plastic tabs, no big deal. Uh, to put it on, it's the same thing. You just line them up is the hardest part. And then give it a little shove. And just put your screws back in. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yours doesn't have a red reflective tape line. What? You work on the side of the road. This reflective tape is something awesome. I dropped this screw into here and then I used the little magnet tool that pops out of there. Anyway, there's your magnet tool. T25. This has like everything. That way you don't have to go back and forth to the toolbox. You just slide it out of the slots. This whole job can take you about 15 minutes if you're on track and know where everything is and what size things are and how to do it. So I've got mine tucked up in here and then I've got it tucked back in there. I can clean that up with some tape a little bit later. Just got to do the bottom part. So I have a little ring that I'm going to put on for ground. Here's a self-tapping screw. It's better to ground into another wire that's already closed, you know, because joints that you uh, tap screw into 
They're fast and easy. That's the advantage. The disadvantage is they tend to corrode. Um, I live in the desert so I can get away with it. So payoff's worth it. Otherwise you need to find a ground wire. Just wired into ground and shrink wrap, dielectric grease. Uh, just make it isolated from the elements. It'll last a good long time. One quick and dirty trick you can do is like I use speaker wire for this. This stuff is actually pretty tough and it's a good way to run a hot in the ground. Just run speaker wire down it. So I run mine from the top so gravity is helping. So it comes in through here. You make sure that it goes behind everything. You need to go down through that hole right there. Um, you want to pull an extra, I'd say, two or three feet. You can always pull it back up. If you're going to go with speaker wire like this, uh, you want to make sure that you zip tie it to the other wires once you have your length figured out correctly. The bottom's kind of uh, tapered to not be sharp. Let me show you what it looks like from below. So here's my speaker wire sticking out the bottom. So just think about if you want to be over or under as you run this. You can see I've got a little pine tree fastener here. Let's run that up over the top like this and we're only trying to get here so you just follow the same harness and that gives you something to zip to as well so here's where our wire is you don't want to ground to the bed because if you ever want to pull the bed off for any reason you don't want to have to undo all of that so i would just do a self-tapping screw into the side of this would be great for a ground because uh, that way nothing's going to be in here to get tore up. If you go up through here, you could hit a wire harness. And a speaker wire, of course, one side is indicated as ground by a black stripe. Or sometimes there'll be a white stripe on one of them. Just make sure that your polarity's right on uh, each end. So you can see by the zip ties sticking down where I've zip tied this. Wherever there's metal, I have it on the opposite side. It's just speaker wire. It does a good job of abrasion resistance and whatnot, but why push your luck? So I've got these heat shrink fasteners here. I've already pre-drilled my hole and pulled the screw back out for this. Boom, I'm gonna hit it right there. Uh, so I'm gonna connect this one uh, without the black stripe. This wire right here is gonna connect to uh, the white and purple wire. And then I'm going to heat gun them, shrink them down real good. And then I'm gonna put the screw in and test it. You see the shine on that right there? That's the goo of goodness. That's when you know you shrunk it far enough. There's the final product with some zip ties. Uh, we've got this aimed down so that it drips and drains the salt water off of here in the winter time. Uh, so it's got a low point so it goes away from where this is instead of just dripping to it. I'm trying this out, see how it goes. So this side's done. Top side I'm gonna redo. Eight months later. So this was my temporary. Time to get some plugs done. I'll get a whole bunch of solder melted onto it first. And then you take the other one and you just have to have one hanging in the air and someplace it's gonna stay. And then you hold the other one and then the solder runs together between the two. So here's how we're looking all tinned. This is gonna be the land that's gonna stay with the truck because that's where the power comes from and the shell's not on. I don't want it to make contact with anything. So it's gonna go on with these here. You see that one's the black, it's got the black thing on. You gotta put these on first because it's like closing the door after the cow gets out of the barn if you don't have them on beforehand. I usually like to get a four inch or five inch piece of solder and just cut it with the iron, clean it on the Brillo. And this makes for a well tinned tip. And what that does, I actually learned this from you guys. Somebody caught me trying to clean the tip with other mains. The ammoniac and the other and having a clean surface like this, 
causes the solder to stick to it. So I can load up the side of this, the iron's the hot part, and it basically fakes like it's a fat tip, even though I'm using one for electronics. And when I got a little bubble on there, it's like a big fat tip. It heats everything really good, really even. So I'll just run that off the end there. While this is still hot and juicy, I'm just going to hold it against there and let these two pull together into one. If you heat it too long or wiggle too much, it won't be strong. It's like watercolor paintings. You want to kick yourself out. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to overcook it. While I'm pinching on this, it just starts to squish. And it looks really dull. A dull looking solder joint's a bad solder joint. You want to have it nice and hot. So I'm going to pick up some solder off the truck. So I get that back on there and all of a sudden everything heats fast like I got a fat tip. So that's really shiny. If I'm holding this with pliers, it's going to set up a whole lot better. As I said before, I can't hold still very well, but I can hold a pair of pliers and they can hold still. You look how shiny that joint is. That's going to be nice and strong. It does make the joint fatter. Your solder joint is going to be fatter if you do this. You can clip it a little bit with your side cuts. This isn't doing any good. It's not connected. It's just sticking out. So trim those bits off and then you can fit your heat shrink over the top of it. This one's a little bit of a close call, but it's getting there. From there, you can use a lighter and get that to close up, or you can use a heat gun as your best option, or you can use that little space, that little corner on your soldering iron, and just keep it moving, and it'll heat shrink it just as good. It won't come out quite as pretty, quite as tight, and if you're not careful, if there's like a bump right here, if I hit that bump with a hot iron, especially with the tip of it, that can cause a break and then it's not going to insulate as well but by and large it's not a bad way to go keep it moving you can get some waxy stink kind of p-tex smell if you do your own ski repair you know what p-tex is if you really want extra credit you can put some silicone on it first silicone grease or dielectric grease as it's called that'll help keep the moisture out of it and make it more abrasion resistant I say the speaker wire does a good job of that. This does a good job of it, but by the time you put electrical tape over the positive first and then wrap your negative into it, you've got years of service out of that that's not going to give you any trouble. So get a little wrap on that well beforehand. Let's run it over once. Get a little stretch in that vinyl tape and it'll make it a little tighter joint. Pull it straight. Go right back over the top. Give it a little tug. So my fingers were not ever in contact with that, so it'll stick good. Well, there it is, folks. I've got everything all set up. This is how I'm going to operate it. One of the reasons I chose this particular one, I'll leave a link in the description. You can buy these on Amazon. Is I do everything DIY by myself, juggling act, right? So this one, I can grab onto this part of the plug and unplug it pretty easy with one hand. Um, I can also grab by this part and plug it by one hand. And you can do this after the fact. I just like that feature of it and why not this is how mine's gonna end up I'm gluing it on there and just like in the movie my big fat Greek wedding you guys always using Windex for everything I use Permatex right stuff this stuff grips like crazy it's really tough it's more expensive but that's what I'm gluing mine on with so now the glue's dry we don't have that paper towel in there I just pull back on the lever here and it should slip off okay I didn't get the glue as thick as I wanted it to. And you can see, even with just a little bit, it holds pretty well. Housekeeping. All right, let's see if this thing works. Left turn signal. Right turn signal. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, brake lights. Bonus footage at the end. Tech for the start till mean familiar. Thank you for your support of my family so that I can take trips and do fun stuff like this. I really appreciate you watching and for when you click the links, those nickels and dimes add up and it helps give me some time off. Thanks for the time off and thanks for the support.